What's up guys, it's Marcus from Perspective Sports and today we're going to review the winners and losers from the NBA offseason. Now I know free agency isn't over, but the big dominoes have fallen, a lot of big time moves have been made, and I feel that we already have a general idea of who the winners are and who the losers are. And we're going to start in the winners category and our first winner is the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors were head and shoulders the best team in the league last year. As you've seen, they beat the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James 4-1. to But they got even better. They re-signed Steph Curry to the five-year $203 million Supermax. They re-signed Finals MVP Kevin Durant to a two-year $53 million deal, but there is a play option after year one. He'll likely opt out and do the same thing. They re-signed Andre Iguodala, who has been a Finals MVP, to a three-year $48 million deal. They re-signed Sean Livingston to a three-year $24 million deal. They brought back Zaza Pachulia to a one-year $4 million deal. They brought back David West to a one-year veterans minimum. So their core is still together. They also went out and got active in free agency, bringing in Swaggy P, also known as Nick Young, who signed a one-year $5.2 million deal. And by the looks of it, he's very excited to be a warrior. He will be hiking up shots. He will still be Swaggy P. They also brought in Omri Caspi to a one-year vet minimum who we all know can knock down the shot. We remember when he and Curry had the back and forth in the three-point battle in the game when Caspi played for the Kings. But they also got active in the trade market when they uh, traded for Oregon Power Forward during the draft, Jordan Bell, who was a great pickup for that team. For just cash considerations. They kept all their assets. And still got better. And it's hard to see the Warriors. Not winning the finals this year. Especially with this revamped roster. That tops even last year's roster. And they're bringing back players like Patrick McCall. Who can see more minutes. Ian Clark who could possibly see more minutes. It's just players like that. And that alone makes them winners. Our second winners are the Houston Rockets, and boy, were the Rockets aggressive this offseason, and it appears to be working out. They gave up a lot for Chris Paul. The Rockets traded Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, Deron Hillards, DeAndre Liggins, Kyle Whitler, and a 2018 first-round pick to land Chris Paul. But even though they gave up a lot on paper, they now have two stars who are capable of moving the ball, bringing the ball up court, and are both proven scores. And thanks to those moves, the Rockets are now in prime position to land disgruntled Nick small forward Carmelo Anthony. And Carmelo Anthony himself said he is confident that he will be traded to the Houston Rockets before the summer is over. And we have to applaud Rockets GM Daryl Morey on being aggressive and putting his team in the best position to win this summer. Our next winners are the Sacramento Kings. And if you told me six months ago that the Kings were going to win the offseason, I would have called you insane. But I don't think anyone expected them to have this successful of an offseason. The Kings entered the offseason with the 5th and 10th overall pick. They selected point guard De'Aaron Fox with the 5th overall pick. And I have to tell you, Fox looks amazing in the summer league. He's looking like the second best point guard in this class. But... Then they traded the 10th pick to Portland for the 15th and 20th, 20th overall pick, which turned into small forward Justin Jackson out of North Carolina, who looks pretty good, and power forward slash center Harry Giles, who, if can stay healthy, has all the potential in the world to become a big-time player. But the Kings didn't stop there. They attacked free agency. They signed point guard George Hill to a three-year $57 million deal, and I think personally that George can be a great mentor to Fox while contributing to the team. They also signed power for Zach Randolph to a two-year $24 million deal. Randolph will be a solid player for the Kings. They also signed Bo Bogdan Bogdanovic out of Serbia to a three-year $27 million deal. One of the more underrated signings of the offseason as they averaged 15 points a game, four rebounds and four assists while shooting 50% from the field while shooting 43% from three. They also made moves signing Vince Carter to a one-year $8 million deal. And based off the looks of it, Vince Carter looks to be a great mentor for these young players. And he also still has a little bit of gas left in the tank. So we have to clap it up for the Kings and Vladi Divac for winning the offseason.
Our next winners are the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Thunder GM Sam Presti went all in. Well, well, well no, he didn't really go all in. Presti burglarized the Indiana Pacers organization when he traded Victor Oladipo and Domitas Sabonis for Paul George. <laughs> in what world did anyone think that would happen? I don't think Sam Presti thought when he offered that deal that they were going to accept it. But outside of getting a superstar and Paul George to pair alongside Russell Westbrook, the Thunder re-signed Andre Roberson one of the best perimeter defenders in the league, to a three-year, $30 million deal, and then went out and signed Patrick Patterson, former Toronto Raptors power forward, who is a better and older version of Domitas Sabonis, to a three-year, $16 million deal. So it's hard not to put the Thunder in the winner's category when you just rob the team of their franchise player and the face of their franchise. And speak of a team that did that, our next winner is the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have expedited their rebuild and started, and it all started on draft night when they traded Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and the seventh overall pick to the Chicago Bulls for Jimmy Butler and the 16th overall pick. Now, let me explain to you why this is arguably more of a robbery than Oklahoma City's. The Timberwolves traded Zach Levine. Who is that athleticism reliant player but has a torn ACL? So it's always a question mark how players will return off an ACL injury. Now I'm wishing them the best, but I'm just saying. But this also impacts his upside. They also traded him Chris Dunn, who quite frankly did not play well at all last season, and it was hard for Tom Thibodeau to find him minutes. And then they just swapped the seventh and the sixteenth overall pick and got all-star Jimmy Butler. The Timberwolves didn't stop there. Just like everybody else, or majority of everybody else, they attacked free agency with the same aggression, signing Jeff Teague to a three-year, $57 million deal, a perfect pickup after trading point guard Ricky Rubio to the Utah Jazz for a future first round, which is going to be a Thunder first round down the line. They also signed power forward Taj Gibson to a two-year, $28 million deal, and Gibson will see solid time as he's playing for his old coach in Tom Thibodeau and will be a good player for Minnesota. And they also managed to make a huge splash in signing Jamal Crawford, who was traded to Atlanta from the Los Angeles Clippers, but was bought out to a two-year, $8.8 million deal with a player option. And is it me, or is Tom Thibodeau really trying to rebuild the Bulls? I mean, Jimmy Butler, Taj Gibson, rumors that Derrick Rose wants to go. But... That's not the point. The Timberwolves are winning the offseason. And our final winner will surprise you. The Brooklyn Nets. Yes, the Brooklyn Nets had a great offseason. Entering the offseason, the Nets lacked two important things to a rebuilding team. Young talent and draft picks, thanks to Billy King. But they got both. This offseason, the Nets made the, a big splash this offseason when they traded center Brooke Lopez in the 27th overall pick to the Los Angeles Lakers in exchange for D'Angelo Russell and Timofey Mozgov. The Nets got a solid guy to start building around in Russell. I don't think he's a you guy. He's your number one option, but you can build around him. But they also managed to acquire a first and second round pick from the Toronto Raptors in a salary dump deal while getting a good player in return. And the deal with the Nets was they would trade center Justin Hamilton to the Toronto Raptors in exchange for Damari Carroll, a future first, and a future second round pick. So right now, the Nets are making all the right moves to building a good team in the future. Now for our losers. And what other team to start with than the Indiana Pacers who were fleeced by the Oklahoma City Thunder? Now, I'd just be doing the same thing and vice versa by telling you what happened. But the Pacers gave up their best player, their franchise player, their face of their franchise for a bad contract and a player who had a below average rookie year. We already heard how I felt about this. Victor Oladipo is a good player, but not a four-year, $84 million caliber player. And Domitas Sabonis is good, but he's no star. Like seriously, Indiana, you couldn't even get a single draft pick from the Thunder? Just one. A second round first no you couldn't but i'm not gonna keep beating a dead horse here we're gonna go to the chicago bulls 
who are here for the same reason as the Indiana Pacers. A horrid offseason move. The Bulls acquired an injured player, a player entering his second year after a disappointing year, and just swapped the 16th overall pick for the 7th overall pick while dealing away your franchise player. Not only did you get bamboozled once, but you, Chicago, got bamboozled twice in the same night. The Golden State Warriors got the best of you too, don't forget, when you sold one of your draft picks to them that turned out to be Jordan Bell, one of the better second round talents. And I'm so sorry you Bulls fans, but you were in for a long, and I mean long and dreadful, rebuilding process. Our next losers are the Washington Wizards, who just handicapped themselves cap-wise for the foreseeable future when they made the decision to match restricted free agent Otto Porter's four-year, $106 million max offer from the Brooklyn Nets. By matching this offer, they forfeit themselves from making a pitch at any top-notch free agents because they have no cap space. All three of their max slots are full, John Wall, Bradley Beal, and now Otto Porter. That's not even a contender in the Eastern Conference that people claim is so bad. John Wall is the only player worth the max money on that roster. Bradley Beal is not. Let's not fall into the hype. Let's not believe it for one second. And Otto Porter is nowhere near. Don't get me wrong. Otto Porter is a good player. He's proven to be one of the better three-point shooters in this league. Bradley Beal, the same thing. But they're not max players. And the Wizards now have no cap flexibility. Because outside of Wall, Beal, and now Porter... Ian Mahimi is owed $48 million over the next three years. That's $16 million a year. Marcin Gortat is owed twenty five million over the next two. That's twelve and a half. million. Markeith Morris is owed sixteen point eight over the next two. That's $8.4 million. So the Wizards, as a team, financially, are in terrible shape. And I mean terrible shape. The New York Knicks, we all expected them to be on this list. Let's be honest. After making mistake, after mistake, after mistake this offseason. First, they passed on Dennis Smith Jr. in the draft. Then making your franchise player Carmelo Anthony feel uneasy and now once out. Offering up your future in Kristaps Porzingis to the trade market. And then finally offering Tim Hardaway Jr. a role player. $71 million over four years. And don't get me wrong, Tim Hardaway Jr. can play. He can be an okay starter in the league, but $71 million over four years? The Knicks keep continuing to make mistake after mistake under owner James Dolan, and there's not even much to say about them at this point. The New Orleans Pelicans are our final losers, and despite not doing much or anything really, they're still losers. The Pelicans are in bad shape. After making no real offseason moves outside of re-signing point guard Drew Holiday to that five-year $126 million deal, they're literally the same team as last year. That's not good when star center DeMarcus Cousins is entering his final year of his deal, meaning you'll likely lose him for nothing. Get ready for that, New Orleans. And in turn, Anthony Davis, your face, will want out because he's tired of losing year in and year out. Which means once he makes it public, you'll be stuck in an Indiana position. You're not that foolish to trade them for what they got for them, but you will be stuck in that position of getting lowballed for an elite-level player. And Anthony Davis, I believe, is a transcendent player in this league. So the Pelicans have created quite the problem for themselves by not doing anything this offseason and deciding it was best to stay pat. Now, hopefully they have something up their sleeve to make their team more of a contender to keep Anthony Davis and Marcus Cousins all in town, but we shall see. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know down in the comment section who you think won and lost the offseason. Also, if you agree or disagree with some of my picks, I look forward to reading them down in the description. Let me know what you want me to give my perspective on in the future, in future videos, or put it in my podcast. I'm always open to new ideas. I'll see you guys there. I'm out.